I love indie games. The creativity that comes with no higher power leaning over a dev team has led to some of the most unique and interesting experiences out there. Unfortunately, with small budgets and small teams, cracks often start to show in the final polish. Obviously, there are exceptions. You only need to look at Yacht Club's fantastically polished Shovel Knight to see AAA quality can come from small teams. But Yacht Club are a rare case of seasoned vets. A lot of the time, dev teams aren't filled with that experience. With the indie explosion into the mainstream, it's surprising more companies haven't tried to get more involved in the action. Of course, there have been a few who have, and the results of these ventures have been some of their most creative and interesting games. Despite developing pretty run-of-the-mill AAA titles, Ubisoft is one of the best examples of a big developer creating incredibly creative smaller titles. As much as I find Far Cry and Assassin's Creed games to be just stupid mindless fun, the problem with them is they're safe. I mean, it makes sense. If you're dropping that much money into something, you need a product that can sell to the mass audience. And like it or hate it, this is what sells. But when Ubisoft cut out small teams to work on new, more indie-like games, it's where the company shines brightest. They even created an engine specifically for such games. The UbiArt framework, which has bought us the recent Rayman titles, Child of Light and Valiant Hearts. Unfortunately, the engine has been criminally underused. But the main series games released on it have all been well received from fans and critics alike. Even Ubisoft's non-UbiArt framework game Grow Home is something you would expect a small indie team to put out because it's so experimental. From its controls to aesthetics, the smaller projects really give personality to Ubisoft as a company and shows that their teams aren't just mindless robots pumping out massive yearly titles. At Ubisoft, there are creative minds allowed to be let free to do something they obviously love, even if it doesn't happen as often as I would personally like. The Far Cry's and Assassin's Creed's have started to feel disjointed in what they want to deliver to us as experiences. They offer up bigger and bigger playgrounds to roam free in, leaving a lot of players with too much to do and making it too easy to lose the focus of the main story somewhere along the way. While this isn't inherently bad, it's nice to see a shift in gears from that to a more focused and controlled setting. It's a platform to just tell us the stories they want to tell, create lovable characters, and experiment with interesting mechanics. But I can't help but wonder why more companies aren't doing this. Now I'm not saying I want the indie competition to be killed off because, as much as I enjoy those previous titles, they still have that tinge of AAA company about them that you won't get with big investors telling you what to do. For me though, the idea of companies branching out small teams to work on passion projects is exciting. You can see the staleness in yearly big budget titles, and most people that work on those games have so much more to offer than that. Nintendo are one of the most creative big dogs around right now, despite a lot of their most recent shortcomings. There is just something about the level of polish they provide to each first party title that is just so Nintendo. Besides Mario Maker, which just made sense for the Wii U, the most creative game the big end has recently released is Splatoon. When Nintendo was let off the leash of Mario, Zelda, and Metroid, they are really allowed to shine with IPs. A few generations ago, Pikmin was released outside the usual big hitters and was met with overwhelming critical and consumer success. Imagine if Nintendo sectioned off parts of their teams to work on new little downloadable first-party indie-like titles. To me, it makes sense for them over every other developer, and because of their history of using a few key mascots for every title, having a few smaller games available between bigger releases would really fill out their currently very barren schedule. Hell, Nintendo had a history of releasing exciting off-the-walls different titles very similar to what I'm talking about. Just look to Kirby's Adventure, F-Zero, Earthbound and Star Fox to see just how much they enjoyed pushing the envelope of what was normal for the times. First party indie-like experiments from Nintendo just makes sense given their history of creativity. Before the internet really made its way into console gaming, B-title games had to be used as a means for filling out libraries, and most of the time, they were fantastic. Games like Psychonauts, Eternal Darkness, Beyond Good and Evil, Brute Force, plus a metric fuckton of others, were all fairly well-received games from small developers, and this is often referred to as one of the best generations of gaming. No one was afraid to take risks on small teams because they couldn't afford to fall short of what the competition was doing. Now these were just small games trying to play alongside the AAAs of the time, but I think it shows there has always been a place for experimental and mainstream gaming, and definitely sowed the seed of looking past huge releases to find those hidden games. 
Sony and Microsoft have been pushing harder and harder for more indie games to be on their respective consoles, and it has been a breath of fresh air to the industry. Back in 2006, Sony contracted that game company to develop three atmospheric exclusive titles, Flow, Flower, and Journey respectively, which were all well received. Even Microsoft picked up Moon Studios game Ori and the Blind Forest a year into development, releasing it on 360 and Steam. Shit, everyone's favorite to hate EA is riding the train currently, with picking up the publishing rights to Unravel, something that is un characteristic of the internet's voted most hated company. Usually EA are known for picking up small teams then sucking them dry of what they once were, but Unravel is seeming to be proving the opposite path of previous trends. While these aren't examples of just indie games, they show that Sony and Microsoft are taking notice of the rapidly growing indie scene, and maybe we will see something similar to what Ubisoft are doing from their in-house teams. To me the reason companies like Ubisoft are making games like Child of Light and Grow Home isn't just the passion project part, although I like to think that does come into play, but it's because they know indie games sell, so why not get in on the action? Like I said, I don't want the indie scene to be squashed out because it is constantly pushing what we know to be as games through walking simulators, narrative experiences, and other things I don't think company investors would want to get their hands near. But it makes me happy the rise in popularity isn't only gaining attention, but getting copied by the big developers.